Hey everybody, this is Darren Van Dam and you are watching Flick Connection, the show that helps you get more out of movies and today we're going to be talking about all the best stuff Netflix is adding in July 2021. So unlike June, July looks like a hell of a month for Netflix. They're adding quite a few new Netflix originals and quite a few of them are horror movies. At the end of this video, I'll show you everything leaving along with the dates that they're leaving so you can be sure not to miss anything you've been wanting to watch. As always, dates are subject to change, but the dates and titles of everything featured in this video are in the top pinned comment below. But let's go ahead and start with all the stuff that they add on July 1st, which is a ton of familiar favorites. So I'm gonna blow through these pretty quickly in alphabetical order. On the first, they add Air Force One, which is a pretty good, but not great, Harrison Ford action movie. They also add the entire Austin Powers trilogy, which are still pretty funny. I watched the first two within the last year, and I still laughed my ass off all the way through them. They also add Boogie Nights, my second favorite Paul Thomas Anderson movie. If you've never seen this and you generally like my recommendations on the channel, this is an excellent movie that takes place with the porn industry as the backdrop. It's about a lot more than that. You've got incredible performances, but also just this really great 70s period piece with a killer soundtrack and some really classic scenes. They also add Kung Fu Panda 1 and 2 for the kids. It's not my cup of tea, but life as we know it gets added, and I'm sure it'll end up in the top 10 on the first week that it's added. It's one of those types of movies. They also add Love Actually, which I almost didn't mention. I know a lot of people like this movie, but I would imagine most people that care own at least one copy of it already. Memoirs of a Geisha is probably the most award-winning movie that they're adding this month. And then a personal favorite of mine is Midnight Run with Robert De Niro and Charles Grodin. This is an excellent buddy movie, kind of a buddy cop movie, but not really. Robert De Niro plays a bounty hunter tasked with bringing in Charles Grodin, who is a white collar criminal, and it is basically a road movie. They're going on a cross country trip. It's incredibly funny and surprisingly underrated for how good it is. They add the 1995 version of Mortal Kombat. If you saw the new one and have been itching to watch the 95 version, I can tell you that it does not hold up. However, if you were a fan of it back then, odds are it's at least worth a nostalgic watch. No Strings Attached is another rom-com, but this one does have Ashton Kutcher and Natalie Portman. They're both good in it. It is pretty by the book, but if you're gonna get roped into watching one, there are worse ones to watch than this. Ophelia is a movie that's a couple of years old that I've never heard of. It stars Daisy Ridley and is a retelling of Hamlet, one of my favorite Shakespeare plays. I'm curious to check this one out, but I'm more curious in why I've never heard of this. Now for a romantic comedy I actually do recommend, She's Out of My League is surprisingly funny. It too is by the book, except this movie is filled with really funny, really talented people that make it work. This makes for a great date night movie. It's got some great moments in it. Again, it's by the book. It's not really surprising or particularly special other than the cast that really elevate this beyond your typical rom-com. The 2009 Star Trek reboot gets added, and I believe only that one, but that's fine with me because it's the only one that I thought was really good. Also for the kids, they're adding Stuart Little back, but it does come and go off of Netflix pretty routinely. Odds are you didn't even know or care that it left. And then another one that's about two years old that I've never heard of, The Best of Enemies. This is another period piece and it stars Taraji P. Henson and Sam Rockwell, two major stars. So I'm a little suspicious that I've never heard of this, but it could just be that it missed my radar because it does have very good ratings on IMDb as of right now. They're also adding the Karate Kid trilogy, another great nostalgic watch that actually does hold up. If you were a fan of this when you were a kid, odds are you may have kids old enough to watch this now. Could make a great watch this month. And then finally they add The Strangers. Like I said, they're adding quite a few interesting horror projects this month, but they're adding The Strangers on the first, which I do think is a pretty decent horror movie. I've watched it more than once and I do find it pretty chilling. Now, let's go ahead and move on with the rest of the month, starting with July 2nd, which is a Friday where they're releasing the first of three installments 
of Fear Street. This will be an anthology series that all ties together with the same story, but they take place in different years. So on July 2nd, they're adding Fear Street 1984, then Fear Street 1978 on July 9th, and then Fear Street 1666 on July 16th. These are actually written by R.L. Stein, who is most famous for the Goosebump series. However, these are not really targeted at kids. These are gonna be more of a teen, young adult, type of a horror movie. So they should be pretty good for people my age and up as well. But my prediction is that most of the interest in these is gonna be around the fact that they're all releasing a week apart, that they all tie together, that it's R.L. Stein, meaning I don't particularly expect these to be very good, but they still may make for a fun watch experience in the month of July. So before continuing with all the new stuff coming to Netflix this month, I do want to tell you very quickly about our newest sponsor that I'm very excited about, Exter Wallets. I've been a front carry guy for years. This is the lightest, slimmest one I've ever carried. It easily fits all my cards. Boop, there it is. Goes right back in. It's, I mean, dude. Far from the coolest thing about this wallet, they have an upgrade option. This little card goes right in there, check that out. It's roughly the width of two credit cards, super thin. So it goes back in the wallet. I've got an app, everything has an app now. I could find it anywhere. Not only that, if I don't lose it in my house, maybe I forget it at a restaurant, the app will show me exactly where it is. Not only that, this is so cool. I lose my phone way more than I lose my wallet. I'm looking for this thing all the time around the house. Check this out. How cool is that? And they have a bunch of designs. They have great top quality leather ones as well as a bunch of colors of this metal version that's more of a card carrier. That's more what I like. And right now my viewers will save an extra 5% off their order in addition to the 4th of July sale going on right now when you use the link in the description below. That's right, go to the link in the description below. You can get one of these bad boys and save some money and it helps support the channel and it's just so damn cool. On July 6th, they add one of my most anticipated things this month. I think you should leave with Tim Robinson. This is a sketch comedy series that only had about four or five episodes in the first season. It was maybe two years ago. I binge watched all of them more than once. I find it really funny. It is silly, absurd humor. It's not for everybody, but if you like a lot of the people you see involved, they get a lot of great guest actors on the sketches. I consider it to be one of the best sketch comedy shows to premiere within the last 10 years or more. Then on July 7th, they add something interesting called Major Grom, Plague Doctor. This is based on a graphic novel series and appears to be a bonkers Russian sci-fi action superhero thing. So far, some of the reviews sound like it's quite good. Not exceptional, but interesting and fun to watch. So I'll be checking it out when it releases. And then on July 8th, another Netflix original horror project, Resident Evil Infinite Darkness. This is a computer generated horror series that takes place between the events of Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. I'm talking about the games, not the movies. I'm particularly interested in this because it looks like it's more in line with the games which I played. I've never been a huge fan of the movies because they don't feel like the games. This looks like it might feel more like the games, so I'm at least interested to see if I'm right. Don't forget on July 9th, they add the second installment of Fear Street 1978, and then they also add Virgin River, season two or three for any virgins watching. I don't actually know what the show is about and I don't care. Then we'll skip ahead to the 14th where they add a classic horror story. That's the name of it. It is an Italian horror movie that looks really interesting. I cannot say for sure yet if they have a dubbed version, but if they do, odds are it's pretty good. Netflix has been doing a good job with that lately with their Netflix original movies. But then they also add another project I'm very interested in called Gunpowder Milkshake. It looks like your typical ass kicking chick plot. However, the look and feel of it, the ladies involved, all interest me, and it's from the director of Big Bad Wolves, which is a movie I really like. So this has piqued my interest quite a bit, actually. Still on the 14th, they add Heist, which is a documentary series about heist, but it seems to be more in line with people who you would not typically expect to pull off a heist. 
interesting stuff. I love Netflix's true crime stuff and I love heist movies, so this seems like the best of both worlds. Hopefully it is. On the 16th, they're adding the final installment of Fear Street, 1666. Hopefully this ties everything together really well and it works out and it is a cool project and not a big waste of everybody's time. So be on the lookout for that. If it's not for you, they're adding the entire Twilight Saga. And Saga just means trilogy where they stretched out the third movie into two longer, more boring movies to squeeze the extra juice out of the box office. On July 21st, they add Troll Hunters Rise of the Titans, which is an epic movie finale to Guillermo del Toro's children's series, Troll Hunters. There are currently three seasons available and a couple of specials, but this is gonna be the grand finale. My kids have not been old enough to watch it, but they're almost there. So I am looking forward to going back and picking up the beginning of this series because I have heard nothing but good things about it. And then speaking of movies based on TV shows, there is a 90 minute special episode that's basically a movie of Kingdom, which is a South Korean zombie series that is absolutely fantastic. It is a period piece with crazy zombies. It's very well written. The effects are fantastic. Even if you're burned out on zombies, like I am, it is a fantastic show. I'm very interested to see what they do with this, what they're calling a special episode. Looks to me like it's a standalone movie, pretty much. Speaking of good series, they add Sky Roho season two. I loved season one. It is a wild ride. The episodes are 30 minutes. It's about a huge brothel in Mexico, and it's just a wild, crazy crime story. It's violent, it's sexy, it's creative, it's fun. I'm very much looking forward to season two. This is actually from the same creators as Money Heist. If you liked that show and have not picked up Sky Rojo yet, you can binge watch season one pretty quickly. Also on the 23rd, they add another horror project, Blood Red Sky. This is actually about a group of terrorists that take over a plane, except there's a woman on this plane that has a secret and it looks pretty wild to me, to be honest. It looks really cool. Again, not sure if there's a dubbed version or not. This will be mixed language. I believe it's German and English, but still, looks like a cool concept at the very least. Speaking of being burned out on zombies, on the 26th, they add The Walking Dead season 10. I checked out of the show four or five seasons ago. I used to love it. If you're still into it, now's your chance to binge watch season 10. And then finally on July 30th, before I tell you everything leaving for the month, they're adding Outer Banks season two. I have not watched it, but I've heard a lot of people really like this show, so I at least wanted to let you know that season two is coming. And then finally, they're adding The Last Mercenary, which is an action comedy movie starring Jean-Claude Van... Jean... How do you pronounce that again? As promised, here is everything leaving in the month of July. Please note that the date listed is the day that it's gone, which means you cannot watch it on that day. So if you are going to mark it on your calendars, make sure you watch it prior to the date listed. If you need more time to go ahead and pause the screen. If not, please help me thank the Patreon supporters down in the comments below. If you're interested in becoming a Patreon supporter, there's a link in the description, along with a link where you can become a channel member and get access to exclusive review videos right here on YouTube. But I will keep making these Netflix lists as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this July episode, and you will see me on the next one.